Hey y'all, hey, welcome back to my channel. It's Christian here. You're tuning in for more of my two cents. If you are new to the channel, then welcome. Thank you so much for tuning in. I appreciate you for being here and hopefully you enjoyed the uh, thought-provoking conversation. It's going to be a good talk today. It will definitely piggyback on and give some uh, insight to a video I did a couple of weeks ago talking about the toxic church culture. And, you know, videos like this is just a small part of a larger conversation. I did as best of a job as I could to do a deep dive and to talk about the mindset and some of the foundational principles that really got us to where we are as a black church um, with the culture and the mindset that we have and how it literally stemmed back to, you know, our ancestors in slavery and did a very, very uh, clear and concise description or correlation between, uh, not correlation, but a comparison of the white church versus the black church, black pastors versus white pastors, our mindset as a whole, as a community and with families versus white families and their communities and how they engage and how they deliver and how they worship and how they essentially view God in their religion and in their spiritual relationship. And this video that I will be doing a reaction on today is going to give more insight, more depth, and it's going to really it's going to make it plain, okay, what I was saying. When I made that video, I was not privy to this video that I am going to play today. I just found this video this week, and it's, you know, it's mind-blowing, but it's going to hopefully validate a lot of things that people didn't understand from my video a couple of weeks ago, and hopefully if you haven't watched it, you will go back and watch it, and you will now be able to understand more I love when confirmation comes after conversation because it really does show that what I was speaking on and what was downloaded to me was legitimate. And it was, I believed it was legitimate the moment I said it, the moment I did the two videos, right? Um, but having this knowledge now and knowing that it is in a museum about slaves and the Bible and religion and how it was given to us, it was not the same religion that our white counterparts have accepted as their truth and as their Christianity and their version of a savior, uh, which makes me question the Bible period. Okay. If you are returning to center, thank you so much for coming back. This is going to be a great one. Hopefully it's very thought provoking. And I would love to hear a lot from you guys on this one. And hopefully we can really uh, just all come to the same consistent consensus that organized religion should um, definitely go right here. Okay. All right. So three points that matter most before we start any conversation. Number one, you're not alone. Number two, you're not crazy. Number three, God, your creator still loves you. And I do too. Let's go ahead. I'm going to play this video in its entirety and then we will go through it and we will talk about it. Get prepared. Get prepared. Because a lot of this is going to either confirm what you probably have already been believing or it is going to enlighten you to some truth that we should all just accept right now. No matter where you are in your spiritual or religious journey, this is a truth you need to accept because it's not being made up. It's very clear here that religion was given to us in a different way than it was for others. And it is time for us to start questioning just about everything we've ever been told concerning our religious beliefs. Inside Washington's Museum of the Bible, a single volume that is like no other, the so-called Slave Bible. Remarkable, not for what's in it, but for what's not. So about 90% of the Old Testament's been removed and about 50% of the New Testament's been removed. Uh, to put it another way, a normal King James Version has 1,189 chapters in it. Uh, the Slave Bible has only 232. Missing are chapters and verses that might have encouraged uprisings. Book of Exodus, redacted. No story of Moses demanding Pharaoh, let my people go. Gone is Galatians, and the verse, there is neither bond nor free, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. And no Jeremiah, woe unto him that useth his neighbor's service without wages. What they've left in are verses such as Ephesians 6, 5, which is the famous verse, slaves be obedient to your master. Looking at this Bible, it's hard to tell that anything's been taken out of it. That's correct. I mean, it looks like a normal book. For many enslaved Africans, this would have been the first time they were exposed to the Bible. A Bible selectively edited to instill obedience, using religion to underpin the horror of slavery. 
When people encounter this exhibit, what lasting impression do you want them to leave with? Well, we want to pass the message on that may this never happen again. Uh, the Bible itself is a, is a whole book. It's not one that you get to carve up and use this piece or that piece. The slave Bible designed to repress rebellion, but it didn't work. Enslaved people in the Caribbean constantly fought against slavery until emancipation. I think it's very relevant to understand our history, not just American history, but our African-American history, our roots and how we got to this point. A dark chapter in the history of the good book. Jeff Bennett, NBC News, Washington. Okay. Did y'all hear what I heard? I'm, I am going to try to be as calm as I can because I've already done a video going through this. But for those who did not watch it and just don't have the attention span of a net to focus, let's start here. I said it. I said it. I said that the religion that Black people were given was oppressive that it was deeply rooted in oppression, never wanting you to know your true power, your true potential, what you could do, where you could go, what you could have. Your story was given to you with the end result being punishment from the beginning. And this is what we have today in toxic church culture. Being told by an actual a researcher, these were these were white men, let's be very clear. These are white men at a museum that was sharing that there was a slave Bible. I need you to understand that before black people were taken, before we were stolen, before we were enslaved, before we were captured and forced to be on this land, no desire to be here. We didn't we didn't trip up on America, we didn't come over here while we were on vacation. We were removed from our where we were supposed to be. We were removed. My ancestors were removed from where they were supposed to be and brought over here. And in order to control the mindset and to, like they said, to prevent uprisings, you have to remove information. Now, let me also say that those slaves didn't come over here with Christianity and religion as their focus. They didn't. They didn't. But they were definitely given a tool. They the oppressors realized that what they had and what they were believing in and what they thought and what they followed, this would be great to give it to the slaves. Let's give them something too. And let's remove something from it. Let's remove the hope. Let's remove the faith. Let's remove the joy. Let's remove the promises. But let's keep in the bondage, the fear. Let's keep the bondage and the fear in. Let's keep that in there. We can't let these we can't let them think that they stand a chance of being delivered. Present day, your pastors are doing the same thing. Present day, your pastors are doing the same thing. They do not want you to stand on your own. They do not want you to accept any accolades or any praise for what you overcome and what you do by the power of your own belief and your own action. They don't want you to be empowered. You would no longer have to depend on them. What I need you to understand is in the slave days, in that time, so disgusting, in that time, slave owners could not get the word or the gospel or the Bible out to all of the slaves. They had so many slaves. It was hard to really get all of them in one place to share this good news with. So they had to find other people who could evangelize. And one of my viewers actually sent over the other week to me a YouTube channel and some videos that are actually called, my God, the videos are called The Religious Instruction of the Negroes. This was a book. It's this called, is a reading of The Religious Instruction of the Negroes. It was a sermon. It was a sermon, you guys. It was a sermon. By Charles Colcock Jones. By Charles Colcock 
Jones, The Religious Instruction of the Negroes. This guy did a great job of reading it um, in different parts on YouTube. And he even said it himself that it was one of the most disgusting and vile things that he'd ever read. But it literally was the instruction of how to give the Bible to slaves. Thank you so much to the viewer that sent that to me because it confirmed what I said in the video. And he actually said it in his email to me. He said, uh, well, he gave me his name. He said, I'm a two center. So shout out to you for being a two center. He said, I watched both of your videos on, ch on church toxicity. And I wanted to ask if you've ever heard of this book. I had not. I had not heard of this book. But wouldn't fate have it, wouldn't irony roll up on us that I would speak something that would be foundationally true and then backed by a sermon taught and shared with white slave owners on how to give the gospel and share religion with their slaves to get them to be on one accord and to submit because they were wild, that they were uh, vile, disgusting human beings, they needed to be controlled. This is what this man said in this sermon. That the slaves were, un, they, they were uncontrollable. That they were just demons. They were wretched. They were in sin. And they needed to be, they needed to be um, controlled and they needed to be brought captive in the mind as well as the body. And this is how they rolled out religion. And I told y'all, I told y'all, I made the correlations. I, 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 I did it. I did it as clear as I could. But y'all don't want, most of y'all don't want to hear me. Some of y'all listening, and I appreciate y'all for listening. This clip that I just played where they said that this Bible, that the slave Bible, this is literally in a museum. This is in a museum. It, the Bible has been used to disempower certain groups of people. And once the slave owners were removed from the picture, the slaves just kept it going. Pastors are now in slave owner positions, owning their members, talking down to their members, persecuting and judging their members, making you feel bad when you don't show up, when you don't give enough, when you don't do enough, when you don't seem sold out enough, when you're not down and out enough, when you're not praying enough. When you're not fasting enough, control is the element that keeps you under the bondage and the foothold of the person who wants the ability to get something from you. Slave owners needed slaves to build all of this. Oh, shit. Slave owners needed slaves to be strong in body and weak in mind so that they could do what they wanted to do with them. Just as you had horse that was pulling things and, you know, cattle that was being used for certain things. Humans were cattle. Humans were property to these people. Let's give them something because they just out here. I mean, I don't even know why they had to mess with us, to be honest with you. I really don't. You already had taken. You already took people. You already taken. Shout out to Liam Neeson. You'd already taken people from their families, from their home, from their land, from their culture. Why did you then have to push this on us like why was this necessary why couldn't you give us the bible that you had no because that would be a that would be a message of hope and faith and love and just as now you see all of our pastors all the black pastors these reaction videos i'm doing are by and large to black pastors getting up spewing utter trash to their members being divisive being manipulative being mean being rude being controlling, demonizing every action that their members take. There is no freedom in church. There is no freedom in religion. The only thing you are free to do is give me more money. Give me more time. Prove yourself to me. That's the only thing you're free to do. You're not free to have your own thought in black church. You're not free to have your own time. You're not free to use your finances the way you want to. You're not free to take any accolades, praise, or glory for your own actions, for showing up, for being consistent, for believing, for having faith, for operating in the actual scripture text. Everything is demonized. You're talking to someone who literally was born and raised in church and continues to see their relatives and their friends and family in the church culture. It's not right. It's not fair.
it's very frustrating that I, I still see people with religious shackles. With religious shackles. It's unacceptable. And this video proves it. 90% of the Old Testament, hold on you guys, 90% of the Old Testament being removed. 50% of the New Testament being removed. Removing entire, but like, entire chapters, entire chapters, y'all. Entire books of the Bible, y'all. Why? Why? Why, why would you do that? There's a reason why. There's a reason why. And ultimately, to me is disturbing because I know that if I were doing this to people or if I was doing this to control or to guide or to skew the views and the beliefs of people, it would be for my own benefit. It wouldn't be for yours. And it's hurtful. It's hurtful, but I think that it's enlightening now. It's important now that we're hearing this and we're not able to dispute it. Nobody's coming against your favorite pastor, your favorite uh, singer, your favorite minister, your favorite leader. This is the God honest truth. And this is the black and white of it all. I submit to you, I don't want to, I don't want this video to go too long because I don't want to get riled up. I submit to you to question everything that you've ever been told. Question everyone that's ever told you anything about God, about Jesus, about spirituality, about religion. Question all of it. Ask why hell exists. Asks why, ask why, G, why God would create people who sin and displease him. Ask why God would give us free will, but then send us to hell for using and exercising it. Ask us how God is not the author of confusion, but so many of you guys are out here debating the same scripture text that y'all are each teaching in different settings. Ask God why there are so many different denominations of one religion. Ask God why there are so many interpretations of one Bible. Ask questions. Ask why you're told to be prayerful and discerning and uh, to seek God's face, but you don't really know what the voice of God is. Ask the questions. Ask why you've been saved for all these years and nothing's ever changed in your life. Ask why people you know have been saved for all these years and nothing's ever happened in their life. Ask why people have died of certain diseases and certain infirmities in their lives. And they were devout Christians. They were devout believers. Um, they were walking in faith, healing, wholeness. Yet they succumb. They, 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 they still died due to an issue of their body. Ask. Ask why. Ask why. Ask why the world continues to grow and, and wax worse and worse while the church is right in its midst. Why is the world not changing and conforming if there are churches on every corner? What about the church really isn't that effective? Ask why. You guys... None of us will always have all of the answers. We're always evolving because that's a part of human nature. That's a part of what we do. That's a part of who we are. That's a part of why we're here to learn and to remember who we are and what we're called to do, what we're called to be and how we're called to experience this interaction that is earth, that is reality. But I'm telling you right now, the organized religion and the Bible has evolved. It has evolved from what the original intent was and whoever created it first, I'm telling you now, a lot of stuff probably was made up. And I'm being nice by not saying all of it is made up. But knowing that people had the motive, the intent, and the ability to remove entire sections, what makes you think that anyone ever replaced all of the sections? What makes you think that people didn't add to some of the stories or the sections? We have got to be smarter than this. 
not just black people, but all believers. Turn your brain back on, please. Turn your brain back on, please. And if you cannot do that, and if you're not willing to do that, step aside as the rest of us help other people to actually dump everything that's been downloaded into them. I was indoctrinated as a child. Majority of you are too. Some of you chose salvation as an adult. That is your business. That was your choice. I did not have one. And while there are values and principles that I can still understand, relate to, and I connect with, and I'm okay with keeping some of those for moral purposes and integrity, standards and values, there are parts that I've done away with. I've done videos on that. I will not go back through that list of what I left behind when I left uh, Christianity. I will not go back through that list today. What I want you to understand right now is that the two-part video that I did on toxic, church, on toxic church culture has now been verified and validated. Exactly what I said happened, happened. And I did not have these two resources when I did that video. I had pure revelation knowledge. And I shared it with you guys directly, concisely. Whether you receive it or not, that's your business. But I did my part and I will continue to do my part. Unapologetically, authentically, and organically. I will not toot my own horn. No, my video may not be the most popular one on YouTube as a Christian um, guru or expert or encourager because some of y'all just want to hear good things that make you feel great and you have no relationship and you have no real understanding and you are living off of hope alone. But as my husband has told me several times before, hope is not a strategy. Hope is not a plan. Y'all need something else. And if you want to know what something else is, I'll do another video to tell you. But right now, the Bible ain't it. You're not safe. It's not safe. It's not safe. It's not safe. And I'm saying this with, with all the love and respect in my heart for God. The Bible it's not safe. I feel like like I feel like we're on a movie or on a TV show, like where there's been like some kind of breach and you're trying to inform people quietly so you don't get in trouble. It's not safe. It's not. Okay. All right. So now that we know what we know, now that we've heard what's in a museum, and we understand that the slaves got a different Bible for a different reason than their white slave owners, let's all agree. Not to disagree, but let's all agree here that that same mindset and that same intent has been passed down to your family, my family, your grandma, my grandma, your mama, my mama, your daddy, my daddy, your auntie, my auntie, your uncle, my uncle, your cousins, my cousin. We all got the same package. And it was the never giving overcomer. Okay. All right. So um, hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Hopefully it's just been enlightening. It wasn't a, a, a video meant to entertain or to be funny or anything. This is enlightenment. Um, my heart usually is a little bit heavier on these videos. Like for real, because there's so much I want to convey, but I want to be calm. Um, and I always want to be respectful so that the message is not lost in the delivery. I think that if... You know, you present it a certain way, people will automatically block it out and will not even try to hear you. And I never want that to happen when I'm talking about things of this nature that are so serious and they are so um, delicate. I always think about and put myself in the emotional stance of my ancestors and people that I've never met. But I always understand that we're still fighting that battle um, beyond the plantation. And maybe that's why I refuse to call the church stage a pulpit right it's not sacred it's not holy the way that they think it is and it was intended to be a lot of things have been skewed i believe that religion and, and christianity and, and, and god and the bible 
was intended and should have been given as a source of light and love. But instead it has become a death wish. It has become full of um, punishment, it's fear, and um, it's hatred. And I don't see how those two things can exist. I don't see how those things can exist in the same space. I do not, I do not understand how the Bible can literally have stories of redemption and stories of love and stories of miracles, signs and wonders, and then stories of uh, damnation and stories of pain and suffering. I don't get it. I don't get it. That's double-mindedness at its best. Rewrote and reconfigured to make it make sense to you as long as you're doing what whoever is instructing you to do. I don't like it. It's time to rethink this entire situation. And I'm glad I have a head start on doing so. So, um, yeah, drop down in the comment section below. Let's have the dialogue. What do you think about what you heard here on this video? Um, if I remember, I will definitely share the clip. If I don't remember, by the time this video posts, I will definitely share it um, to my uh, story. Well, not my story, but to my YouTube shorts. And hopefully it will be, maybe it'll go viral. This video is old, though. So it's not like it's a new video or anything like that. It actually was posted... Um, and I got this from Larry Reed. So I got this off of Larry Reed's Facebook page. He posted it on January 6th. And um, this was a story done by ABC. So <laughs> it's legitimate, but it definitely was. Um, the slave Bible was definitely destructive. And it was full of wicked intent. And all I'm going to say is, its roots go deep and they are still growing. Okay. So, um, yeah, let's, let's feel the conversation. If you like the video, go ahead and uh, click the like button, subscribe to the channel. I would love to add you to my Two Cents crew. Until next time, I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care and uh, stay aware. Bye.